The African continent has always been a land of wonder and adventure. From the vast savannas to the dense jungles, Africa has a rich history and diverse wildlife that fascinates people to this day. However, we often forget that the Africa we see today is vastly different from what it was during the Pleistocene Epoch. Just imagine what it would have been like to go on a safari through Africa during that time, when the climate, geography, and wildlife were entirely different from what we know today. In this video, we will take a closer look at what a safari through Africa during the Pleistocene Epoch would have been like, and how it would differ from the safaris we know today. Before we start this adventure, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. With that being said, let's begin. Embarking on a safari through Africa during the Pleistocene Epoch would have been a fascinating and unforgettable experience, offering glimpses into the diversity of life that inhabited the continent. The ecosystem of the African continent was vast and varied, with different habitats supporting an array of species ranging from small rodents and insects to giant predators and herbivores. As you journey through the grasslands, you would come across vast herds of herbivores such as the massive Dinotherium. Dinotherium, an extinct genus of proboscideans, lived during the Middle Miocene to early Pleistocene epochs and was one of the largest land animals that ever lived. Despite their elephant-like appearance, they had unique feathers that set them apart from modern-day elephants. One of the most notable differences between Dinotherium and modern elephants is the former's highly flexible neck. While elephants have relatively rigid necks, Dinotherium had a more versatile neck that allowed it to move its head in different directions with ease. This adaptability is reflected in their name, which comes from the Greek words dinos, meaning terrible or strange, and therian, meaning beast. Another major distinction between Dinotherium and elephants is the position of their tusks. Unlike modern elephants, whose tusks emerge from the maxilla or upper jaw, Dinotherium's tusks curved downward and backward from the mandible or lower jaw. The tusks were quite long and could reach up to 4 meters in length, making them the longest of any land animal. Researchers believe that they might have used their tusks to strip the bark off trees, dig up roots, or defend against predators. Dinotherium also had limbs that were adapted to a more cursorial lifestyle. Their long, slender limbs and elongated metapodials, the bones that extend from the ankle to the toes, suggest that they were capable of running at relatively high speeds. This adaptation may have been useful for avoiding predators or for covering large distances in search of food and water. Polorovis is a type of African wild cattle that no longer exists. It first appeared during the Pliocene period, which was approximately 2.5 million years ago, but then became extinct at the end of the late Pleistocene period, around 12,000 years ago. Polorovis had a similar appearance to the African buffalo, but was larger in size and had longer curved horns. The estimated weight of Polorovis was around 1,200 kilograms with the largest males weighing up to 2,000 kilograms, making it one of the largest bovines that ever lived. Metridiochorus, also known as the giant warthog, was a genus of pig that existed during the Pliocene and Pleistocene periods in Africa, but is now extinct. This species was sizable, with a length of 1.5 meters, or 4.9 feet, and had a similar appearance to a giant warthog, its defining characteristic was its two large pairs of tusks that pointed sideways and curved upward. The creature's molars had a complex and knobby pattern, indicating that Matridiochorus was an omnivore, meaning it had a diet that included both plant and animal matter. Hippopotamus gorgops was a fascinating species of hippopotamus that existed in Africa during the late Miocene period and eventually spread to Europe during the early Pliocene period. Its fossils were first discovered in Europe and provide significant insight into its physical characteristics and unique features. Compared to its living relatives, Hippopotamus gorgops was much larger, with a length of 4.3 meters, a shoulder height of 2.1 meters, and a weight of 3,900 kilograms. 
Its large size may have been a result of the abundant vegetation available to it, which provided an ample food source. One of the most remarkable features that set Hippopotamus gorgops apart from modern hippos was the placement of its eyes. While modern hippos have eyes positioned high on their skulls, Hippopotamus gorgops had orbits that protruded above its skull. This unique feature would have allowed the creature to have even better visibility while submerged underwater, which would have been particularly beneficial as it spent much of its time in the water. Another characteristic that made Hippopotamus gorgops distinctive was its large and impressive tusks. These were not only important for defense, but also played a crucial role in the animal's survival, particularly when fighting over territory, resources, or mating rights. Its powerful jaws and sharp teeth, along with its impressive size, would have made it a formidable force in its ecosystem. Therapithecus brumti was a large and impressive species of terrestrial monkey that existed during the mid to late Pliocene period. This species, which is now extinct, belonged to the Papianin group of primates. Fossil remains of Therapithecus brumti are primarily known from skulls and mandibles that have been found in Pliocene deposits at the Amo River, Ethiopia, in the Shangara Formation. Like many other primates, Therapithecus brumti was quadrupedal and had highly dexterous, manipulative hands. This would have allowed it to climb trees, gather food, and interact with its environment in a variety of ways. However, what made this species particularly noteworthy was its size, especially among males. For example, a specimen found at Lamqui, Kenya was estimated to have weighed approximately 43.8 kilograms. This suggests that male Therapithecus brumti was among the largest primates of their time. Crocodilus thorbjoner soni is an extinct species of crocodile from the Pliocene and Pleistocene eras of the Turkana Basin in Kenya. It could be the largest known true crocodile, with the largest skull found indicating a possible total length of up to 7.6 meters. Crocodilus thorbjoner soni was named by Christopher Broku and Glenn Storrs in 2012 in honor of John Thorbjarnerson, a conservationist who worked to protect endangered crocodilians. Homotherium, an extinct genus of the Macarodontini saber-toothed predator, was a remarkable and unusual creature. One of the most striking features of this prehistoric cat was the marked imbalance between its front and hind legs. With its long front limbs and squat hind limbs, Homotherium had a body shape more akin to a modern hyena, an animal with which it likely shared the habit of hunting in packs. Often called a scimitar cat due to the shape of its teeth, Homotherium was a formidable hunter capable of taking down prey as diverse as early Homo sapiens and woolly mammoths. While the exact hunting methods of Homotherium are still a subject of debate among scientists, it is believed that the species may have hunted in packs, taking down large herbivores like bison and horses through coordinated ambushes. In addition to its impressive hunting abilities, Homotherium had several adaptations that allowed it to thrive in its environment, including powerful jaws, strong forelimbs, and a highly efficient respiratory system. Dinophilus is often called a false saber-toothed cat because while its front canines are enlarged beyond a point normally seen in today's big cats, they were not as large as the true saber-toothed cats, whereas Smilodon is, without doubt, the most famous prehistoric big cat. Dinophilus is the most notorious. This notoriety comes from the long association of Dinophilus hunting and eating early hominids like Homo habilis, Paranthropus, and Australopithecus afarensis, thought by some to be an ancestor of modern humans. This predation reveals that Dinophilus was active in Africa, but the various species attributed to the genus are wide-ranging, which remains to be found across Eurasia and as far north as North America. Agriotherium, a well-known genus of bears in the fossil record, is renowned for its impressive size. Among the largest bears currently known, Agriotherium could reach up to 2.7 meters, or 9 feet, in body length and weigh approximately 900 kilograms, or 1,980 pounds. Unlike other bears, 
Agriotherium had longer legs and shorter faces, which made them more lightly built. Their wide, short jaws were capable of generating immense bite force, adding to their fearsome reputation as predators. So, while the fauna of Africa today is breathtaking, a lot has changed since the Pleistocene. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.